zone overall. Patrick Murphy has talked about how rare it is to have a pitcher with a drop ball just as effective as the rise, and that's what Fouts has in the repertoire. Last year, 22 games with 10 plus strikeouts. 16 of them came against ranked foes, and she's got a tall task ahead of her with the Virginia Tech Hokies rolling in at a perfect 5-0 on the season and eighth in the country unanimously among all the polls. We're excited for this one. There you see Rose Shard. She'll get her turn in a bit. What a night for softball in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a pretty fun one tonight. I'm very excited. Buckle in, folks. Cam Fagan will start things off. And here is Montana Fouts. First pitch foul, and we are off and running. There you see Cameron Fagan, the sophomore, from Denellen, Florida. All freshman team selection in the ACC last year. It was also second team all-conference. Hit 409 as a freshman. You can see the season average this year, 474. This is the first game for Virginia Tech in the Eastern Bama Bash. Alabama just beat Evansville a bit ago, 10-2. Dowling's throw is just in time to get Fagan for out number one. And already the Crimson Tide flashing the leather. Here's the defense for the second ranked Alabama Crimson Tide, Shipman behind the dish. Prangy at third, Dowling over at short, Bloodworth at second, Tau at first. Outfield with Johnson, Goodnight, Woodard from left to right. First pitch ball to the senior, Mackenzie Lauder out of South Boston, Virginia. Coach Pete DeMora said she has been swinging it like she did her freshman year. 400 average on opening weekend was four for 10 with four RBIs. One and one. A chilly day moving into the evening here in Tuscaloosa. Storms yesterday brought in a pretty large cold front, 45 degrees. Wind chill less than that. Off speed misses, two and two. Dowling has to hurry the throw to first again in time, two gone. Yeah, what you're going to see with Dowling is that really quick transfer to first. You know, people might think, hey, that's a sure safe, but Dowling's fast transfer and nice strong throw is going to get that out. Two straight pretty tough plays to Bailey Dowling. And here's Jamie Bailey with the bases clear and two gone. Big cut by the junior from Scott Depot, West Virginia, out of Hurricane High School. Second team all ACC last year, first team all conference in 19. Bit of a struggle on opening weekend, just four of 17.
Quickly down 0-2. Swing and a miss. And Montana Fouts has her first strikeout of a night. She had 14 in her one performance on opening weekend. And Keely Rochard steps into the circle next. Don't go anywhere. A top 10 matchup returns when we get back. A lot of folks bundled up here at Rhodes. 40 degree temperatures in Tuscaloosa. But all these folks are going to get to see a show. Montana Fouts goes three up, three down in the top of the first. And now it's Keely Rochard, the senior reigning SEC Pitcher of the Year in the circle for Virginia Tech. What you're going to see with Rochard is she throws mid to upper 60. She has a rise ball drop and a great changeup. And she really just mixes it up all around the plate and really attacks those batters and is pretty consistent overall. Had a great career, but really burst onto the scene with her gutsy performance in the Los Angeles Super Regional last year in the NCAA tournament. Almost got the Hokies to the Women's College World Series. Facing Jenna Johnson to start. Here is the Alabama lineup, a little bit different from earlier today. Top three remains the same. Prangy and Dorr doing a little flip in the 6-7 spot, and Shipman getting the start, batting cleanup. Jenna Johnson earlier today was one for two with a walk, a couple runs scored. Has been impressive in the leadoff spot, the junior out of Franklin, Tennessee. Entering the weekend, a 462 all-time batting average in the Bama Bash. And quickly ahead in the count, 3-0. And we talked about it earlier, Kate. Patrick Murphy says, I want my lead off on at least 50% of the time. And Johnson right now operating with a 5.56 five, on base percentage. And it'll get better. Lead off walk. Yeah, right now what Alabama is trying to do is, you know, take in, see what Rochard is pitching and what her go-tos are, what she's attacking with and hopefully learning from each player, each at bat they can learn from and apply it to theirs. She's backed up by a defense, currently ninth in the ACC in fielding percentage. Brown, Ritter, Green in the outfield, left to right. Milius, Bennett, Fagan, Bailey on the infield with Lauder catching. And the defense might get a workout with Dallas Goodnight at the plate. Talented freshman out of Georgia. Top five rated recruit, according to extra inning softball. Was two for two against Evansville with a couple runs scored. That average at 538, OBP at 647. There goes Johnson on the hit and run. The throw is in time. And Virginia Tech catches Jenna Johnson stealing for out number one. That was a great job by Virginia Tech's catcher. She really, you know, used that up pitch and had a great position to throw that runner out. That's one advantage of having an, a rise ball pitcher is that up ball and being in a great position as a catcher to make that throw down to second. Third time Johnson has been caught stealing. First time she's been caught stealing, trying to take second. The other two were on double steals where she tried to come home. And Mackenzie Lauder makes the throw to get out number one and help out her pitcher. Swing and a miss from Goodnight, two and two.
Four count. Fifth meeting all time between the Crimson Tide and the Hokies. Alabama's won the previous four. Last time these squads got together, 2014, a 19, should say 14-5 win for the Crimson Tide. But those Hokies didn't have Keeley Rochard. That's her first strikeout, two gone. What you're really going to see with Rochard is that slight upspin on a, almost every pitch that's elevated. I mean, you see a slight movement up on that low rise ball that she's throwing to get that strike. Two gone for Kaylee Tao. Right down the heart for strike one, Tao, the three-time All-American out of Madisonville, Kentucky. In her final year of eligibility, one of those COVID seniors you see across the country this year. 182 average on the season. Was 0 for 1 earlier today with a couple sack flies and a run scored. What you're probably going to see with this Alabama offense is, you know, a little bit more of a picky eye initially, seeing what Rochard is throwing. And then second time around, they have a bit more of an understanding of what to look for and what works for them. That one curls inside. Yeah, Tao, one of the best eyes on the Alabama roster in 2019, tied the single season record with 66 walks. Last year against ranked teams, at road, she hit 370. Trying to get off to a good start here today, but fooled there, two and two. Well hit to center, Ritter's on the run, and she makes the catch just in front of the warning track to end the inning. No score, as expected. We head to the second, Alabama and Virginia Tech still battling at Rhodes. Montana Fouts, one of the most recognizable faces and names in the sport of softball, Kate. And man, she was good last season for the Crimson Tide. Absolutely, she just knows how to command every single one of her pitches and really, you know, limit the freebie game. I mean, she limits walks. That's something Coach Murphy always talks about is that she really does not walk that many batters. And as a hitter, you know, the ball's gonna be there and you gotta attack those pitches when, you're, when they're near you. You see all the accolades also named to Team USA in the off season. She will pitch in Birmingham at the World Games with the US women's national team. Fouts, of course, had the perfect game against UCLA at the Women's College World Series, but trying to carry the team a little further than just the semis this season. Facing four, five, six in the order. Ball one to the graduate student, Ali Repco. Broadway, Virginia, transfer from Elon, where she was first team all Colonial Athletic Association last year. A little late there, 1-1. One, one.
What you're going to notice is a lot of these Virginia Tech players are playing pretty far back in that box, just trying to see the ball as long as possible. But it also makes for more movement as well, so it's kind of the lesser of two evils. Another K for Fouts. Got her on the rise. One down. Montana Fouts, one of the best in the country in terms of striking people out. Look at the numbers last year. Fouts at number one, just one K behind was Keely Rochard. Gabby Plain, Georgina Corrick, Ashley Rogers, all there as well. But man, if you think we're hyping up this Fouts Rochard matchup too much, I don't think we're hyping it up, up enough. I mean, what a battle this will be tonight. Absolutely. Strike one to Kelsey Bennett. Junior out of Buford, Georgia, second team all-conference last year, was the 2019 ACC Freshman of the Year. Coach DeMore said she's starting to feel more like that player that won that award in 2019. Six fifteen average. Couple RBIs on the season. Virginia Tech five and zero had to eke out some wins by a single run on opening weekend, but got through it unscathed. One, two, and another K for Fouts. And there you see Pete Damore, fourth year at Virginia Tech, previously with Kennesaw State, assistant at Missouri for a decade. He has done such a great job with this Virginia Tech program since arriving. And Kate, you played in the ACC. That is a conference that is so deep right now. You've got Florida State, who is obviously very good. Your reigning regular season champion, Clemson. Duke won the postseason conference tournament last year. Virginia Tech always in the mix. Georgia Tech getting better. So many good squads in that league. Absolutely. I mean, just to see these newer teams like Duke and Clemson come up and just, you know, bring a different level to the ACC conference in general is just really impressive. And I mean, Virginia Tech is now continuing just to get better every year, especially with this newer coach and Keely Rochard just, you know, really setting the tone for the entire conference. Yeah, this could be the year Virginia Tech could finally host regionals for the first time in program history. As Addie Green takes it low and away. Green, the sophomore from Suffolk, Virginia. Two ninety-seven a season ago. The one, two. Swing and a miss. Fouts strikes out the side. Montana's got four Ks as the NFCA National Pitcher of the Year last season keeps it humming, scoreless in Tuscaloosa, off to the bottom of the second between number two, Alabama, and number eight, Virginia. Well, we talked about the Atlantic Coast Conference. What a year this could be. Florida State, two women's college World Series champ appearances in the last three years. Valerie Cagle led Clemson of a title last season. Deja Davis, so impressive at Duke, and Keely Rochard the reigning ACC Pitcher of the Year. And Rochard back to work in the circle, facing 4-5-6 for the Crimson Tide here in the bottom of the second. Foul tipped into the glove by Allie Shipman. What a start to her Alabama career. 4-29 this season after transferring from Tennessee. Earlier today was two for three with three RBIs and a two run homer against Evansville. 
And there is Richard's off speed that they talk about so much. I mean, you know, that's a tough pitch to hit. It's moving on two planes, you know, down and in a little bit and just impressive. Shipman gets a piece. Allie Shipman, we talked about it earlier. Good softball family, her sister Madison played at Tennessee. Maddie's down in Clearwater calling games on the ESPN family of networks, but I'm sure she's got her eye on this one. Outside, one, two. And Shipman a part of the two big time transfers Alabama brought in, along with Ashley Prangy out of Ohio State. Had to fill some holes. A lot of people graduated or transferred out last year. And Shipman has just slid into that catcher spot for the Crimson Tide that was occupied last year by Bailey Hemphill. Full count. <laughs> Lead off walk for Alabama, second straight inning. Keeley Rochard has allowed the first batter to reach via the base on balls. Now Bailey Dowling, sophomore out of St. Joseph, Illinois. 250 on the season. It was one for three with an RBI earlier today. Look at Rochard, you know, you have a base on balls. That's all right, and the next thing you do is you attack that next pitch and get that strike and really put your team in a position to, you know, get an out time called and Rochard is facing a batter who's had a ton of success against ranked teams last year at Rhodes against ranked foes Dowling hit 455 with seven RBIs in all of 2021 before her injury she had at least one RBI in every game against a ranked opponent in which she had not bat that's the kind of clutch factor Kate that you look for in a youngster if she has it Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's the name of the game. To be able to do that is so impressive. And I just, you know, I love to see her offensive game. It's very impressive. Big day of college softball all across the country. A lot of it in Clearwater, but a lot of eyes on Tuscaloosa here on this Friday night. Good pitch from Rochard, 2-2. Two -two. Rochard does a great job of having that low rise ball come in and so hard as a hitter to see that spin and recognize it in time to be able to attack that pitch. to third, and the force is recorded at second. Milius to Fagan, one down. Keely Rochard has the out here in the bottom of the second. And for more on Rochard's off-season exploits, let's go down to Kira. 
Yeah, Keely Richard, she's obviously a very talented pitcher, but Coach DeMore said she's actually one of the hardest workers. She's out here today playing with passion and skill, which is huge considering she didn't touch a softball all summer. She was busy prepping for her national team tryout. So that really validates that she's one of the best pitchers in the country. Was so impressive last year. Thank you, Kira. As we talked about, led Virginia Tech out of the Tempe Regional. They won game one in the Los Angeles Super Regional. But Pete Tamore said, you know, it was a learning experience for the entire team. They learned, hey, it's hard to beat these top teams two times. You really see Keely Rochard mixing that up and down and off speed. Something to look for and look out for as you can see the Alabama hitters are back in the box because they want to see that movement and have as much time as possible to be able to recognize it and hit it. Here's the one one to Prangy. Swing and a miss by the Ohio State transfer out of Indiana. 2019 second team all Big Ten. Right at 500 on the season after an 0 for 2 performance earlier with an RBI. Time called. The one, two. High and outside, two and two. That was pitch number 33 from Keeley Rochard. Alabama has seen 23 pitches come out of the hand of Montana Fouts in the early going. This could be a tough play, and it's mishandled by Bailey. Everybody safe. Runners on first and second for the Crimson Tide. Those types of plays are so hard to make because the ball is spinning so much. I mean, throughout that entire time I was on the ground, it's just spinning. You don't know where it's going to go. And, you know, the trick to fielding those, just keep your head on it and breathe while you field through that ball. Error charged to Jamie Bailey at first. So a big chance for Abby Dorr. Dorr the junior from Eugene, Oregon. Business major here in Alabama. One for three with an RBI against Evansville. Chase is there, 1-1. One, one. These Alabama hitters are really attacking those low pitches. They're looking for that, trying to lay off the rise as much as possible and attack that low pitch, that low screw on that last one. Door ripped to right. That's down. Patrick Murphy sends Dowling. She will score. Alabama strikes first with an RBI from Abby Dorr here in the bottom of the second. Just like we were saying, attacking those low pitches, and that's exactly what Dorr did on that last play. I mean, wow. Poke it through the infield, and that's your goal. You're really trying to extend through that pitch. You'll see downing on second. Looking at her coach, sending her home, head down, just going right for it. Well, you can't blame Patrick Murphy. You know 
against a pitcher of the caliber of Rochard, if you have a chance to score, you have to take it. Especially early in the game. I mean, you're trying to make things happen and really extend your lead, and that's the best way to do it. Pinch runner in for door. That is McKay Gidley, Tuscaloosa native out of Shelton State previously. As well as a first and third set up right now with less than two outs. And for Megan Bloodworth, who burst onto the scene in a big way out west, the freshman out of Georgia, top 10 recruit coming in, hit 600 on opening weekend with seven RBIs, three homers, including a grand slam on the first pitch that she saw in her collegiate career. It was 0 for 2 earlier today with an RBI. Goes after that, 0-2. Sky high from Bloodworth. And Bennett is there for out number two. There is Savannah Woodard, the nine hitter. Junior from Warrior, Alabama. All newcomer team last season in the SEC. Hitting 286 now after a strong two for three game earlier with two runs scored. Yeah, there's that low screwball that, you know, we were talking about earlier. Definitely one of the pitches that Alabama, after they've seen her once, or once around, they're gonna try and attack that pitch Second time through the lineup, coming up. <laughs> Woodard last year at home against ranked teams hit 318 had to come in and play second base after the injury to Bailey Dowling in the Tennessee series and did a nice job filling in that spot. Was up often with runners in scoring position and two outs, just like right now. Gidley will head for second, two in scoring position for the Crimson Tide. Butter did a great job keeping that ball out in front and that forces you know the runner to stay at third. On that last play, you'll see she blocks right there, keeping in front, keeping square towards that ball. The one, two, popped up. Bennett has a beat, catch made, side retired. But Abby Dore puts Alabama on the board with an RBI single to right. Crimson tied one, Hokies nothing. Virginia Tech will try and answer when we come back. nothing everyone here is bundled up it's a little chilly outside but you know the Alabama atmosphere here is so exciting people are excited to come out and watch this the coaches are excited to be here the players are playing with intensity it looks like it's gonna be a really good game he's bring up seven eight nine first pitch by Alexa Milius to short Dowling makes the play one gone Kate, that is the third time we have seen Bailey Dowling make a nice little play over at short. Yeah, she just does a great job of keeping her head down, fielding that ball, and just making a quick transfer with a very strong throw, and just making it look clean, making it look easy. Now Emma Ritter takes a big cut. Ritter, the sophomore from Perryville, Maryland. Two 
257 hitter in 2021. Average at 333 this year. To short again, Dowling again, and another out, two gone. That's what makes that so effective, you know, on that low pitch, getting the run, the hitters to ground out every time. I mean, that is textbook right there on what you want to achieve when you throw a drop ball, right? Founts being efficient, 27 pitches. Now facing the nine hitter, Kelsey Brown. Led off in 46 of the. As they say, she didn't go. 46 of the 52 games the Hokies played last year. Junior out of Haymarket, Virginia. Second team all conference a season ago. Patrick Murphy did not like the call from the third base umpire, Shane Jackson. Brown, one for 12 to start her junior season. This will be a tough play. Dowling, the throw to first is not in time. And Kelsey Brown is aboard here in the top of the third. That's what makes slappers so hard to defend against, right? Like, they have so many different options. They have bounce slaps, which is what that last one was. You were trying to bounce it down in the ground and get as much air as possible on that ball, which just gives you more time to be safe at first. And that was just a textbook bounce slap right there. See what kind of adjustments the Hokies have made. First pitch, a ball to Fagan, who grounded out back in the first. You've mentioned Alabama's head coach a couple times. There he is, Alabama head coach Patrick Murphy, the Hall of Famer, right behind volunteer assistant Ryan Aya Murray. She was on that 2012 national championship team. Looks like coach trying to hide behind Ryan right now. Fagan right to third, Prangy is there, side retired. Virginia Tech gets a hit, but can't do much else. We head to the bottom of the third here in Tuscaloosa. Off to the bottom of the third, Alabama one, Virginia Tech zero here in Tuscaloosa at Rhodes Stadium. Pleased to be joined now by the head coach of the eighth ranked Virginia Tech Hokies, Pete DeMore and, and Coach, what adjustments do you want to see from your hitters the second time around against Montana Fouts? Right, it sounds like we have a technical difficulty and Coach DeMore can't hear us. So unfortunately, we can't get an answer, but I'll ask you, Kate, what adjustments do you want to see from the Hokies going forward against Montana Fouts? I think the keys to success against Montana Fouts is going to be laying off that up pitch and looking down and trying to get extended through that low pitch and attack that because that's a little bit easier of a pitch to hit if you're on time and you're a little bit behind the ball. I'm sure that's exactly what Coach Demore would say, so. <laughs> Essentially the same effect. And now we'll see what adjustments Keely Rochard makes in the circle facing the Alabama order for the second time. Here's Jenna Johnson. Swing and a miss, Johnson walked back in the first. She was caught stealing for the third time this year, trying to take second.
One, two, foul off. As Rochard continues through this game, I think for her making the adjustments to get a little bit more on the corners of the plate to make her pitches just a little bit tougher to hit. And, you know, as these Alabama faces, as these Alabama hitters face her, I think that's what they're going to start to notice her do. Just missed. 2-2. Two -two. This is the second top 10 battle across the country we've had today. Earlier, Florida State beat Texas 9-2 down in Clearwater. And as we said in the intro, it's never too early to have battles between top 10 teams. And once the NCAA tournament rolls around, matchups like this will just help your RPI as Johnson Misses that. Strikeout for Keeley Rochard, her second. Rochard just does a great job of commanding that rise ball and really getting those swings and misses, as well as fouts. They both really have great pitches. Their balls are moving, and that's what we're seeing right now is those pitches spinning and just tough pitches to hit. Here is Dallas Goodnight. She's the other strikeout victim. That was in the first. Yeah. Quickly 0-2. And just as effective as her rise ball is, so is her drop ball. And that's what that last pitch was. That ball is just breaking hard down in the zone. What you're trying to do is get a batter to roll over that pitch, hit it right into the ground, and let your defense make the play at first. Good night. So effective with the small ball, the slapping. That's how we saw her reach earlier today. But she's got power, too, and she was swinging away. Another strikeout for Rochard. Two gone. Our Thursday night women's basketball doubleheader on the SEC Network will feature this matchup. Number one, South Carolina, off to College Station to face Gary Blair's Texas A&M Aggies at 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central. This is one you don't want to miss. Thursday night on the SEC Network. South Carolina and Tennessee on Sunday will be on ABC. College Game Day will be there. Really big weekend for women's sports. You've got the Clearwater event. UCLA Florida State on Sunday will be on ESPN. Women's basketball on ABC. Tao flew out back in the first. Last year against ranked teams hit 370 at home with 20 RBIs. So she was a big part of that offense in the big games for the Crimson Tide. Now showing that good eye, 3-0. She's doing exactly what you want to do as a hitter. You want to watch pitches. You want to make the pitcher throw a ball in your zone, and that's exactly what Tao is going to do. She has that patience, and she's ready just to, you know, make sure it's her pitch. A four-pitch walk from Keeley Rochard, her third of the night. Runner on. That brings up Allie Shipman. Shipman walked in the second. She's hitting. 455 with runners on base here this year. And 
And again, first pitch swinging, that's out of play. 0-1. Good stop there by Lauder. High in the sky and out of play. Richard's really continuing to mix up her speeds. Just makes her more of an effective pitcher. That pitch count now at 62 here in the bottom of the third. Although pitch count innings pitch, not really a concern for a pitcher like Keely Rochard, who threw over 200 innings in 2021. Yeah, you could say she's a bit seasoned. <laughs> <laughs> she can go if she needs to. This is a big one. Pay off to Shipman. High and outside, another walk. Fourth surrendered by Keeley Rochard. Two on, two out. Four walks in all of opening weekend combined for Rochard. She is. Walked four today. <laughs> Bailey Dowling hit into a fielder's choice in the second. Came around to score. She is the lone run for the Crimson Tide right now. That scoots away. Tao will head to third, Shipman to second. And a big moment here in the bottom of the third with two in scoring position for the Crimson Tide. Bama runners did a great job on that, just staying aggressive and keeping their eyes on the ball that entire time, knowing exactly where the ball was to make sure they got safely to that next base. The 1-1. One, one. That is hammered foul by Dowling. Two. The inning started with two strikeouts. It looked easy and good for Keely Rochard. But a four-pitch walk to Tao, a walk to Shipman, a wild pitch. Sets up this big 2-2 two -two to Bailey Dowling. Got her looking. What a pitch from Keely Rochard to get the strikeout and end the threat. Rochard with three Ks in the frame. Alabama leaves two in scoring position. Off to the fourth, one nothing Crimson Tide over the Hokies. We've played three, Alabama one, Virginia Tech nothing here at Rhodes Stadium in Tuscaloosa. Pleased to be joined by the head coach of the Crimson Tide, Patrick Murphy, coach, you said on our call this week this would be a pitcher's duel. That's what we've seen thus far. 
how do you like how your offense was able to get that clutch hit in the second inning? Well, Abby's, Abby, that was a great at-bat by Abby Dorr and just good at-bats in front of her too. But, you know, this uh, Dowling, I don't know if I would have swung at that pitch either. So, um, you know, she's a hell of a pitcher. I think this is two of the three that were first team All-Americans last year in this game. So if you like pitching and defense, this is probably the game to watch. Yeah, Coach, what do you think about Montana's performance so far? I mean, I, I mean, I think she's fine. I mean, it's uh, she's hitting her spot. She's got good velocity. Um, the one thing that, you know, we've noticed with them is they swing hard and they're aggressive. And, you know, um, if she gets ahead in the count, it doesn't necessarily have to be, like, in the zone because I think they're going to protect. And, um, you know, they're really good battlers up to bat. So hopefully she can keep her velocity up. And, you know, I know it's getting chillier as we go along here. Coach, thank you so much. Stay warm. Good luck the rest of the way. Okay, thanks. It's Alabama head coach Patrick Murphy. He's right. It is getting chillier here in Tuscaloosa as Fouts comes back out to work facing 2-3-4 in the order. One hit for each team, but one run on the board, and that came for Alabama in the bottom of the second on an RBI single from Abby Dorr. Mackenzie Lauder will start things off for the Hokies in the top of the fourth. Big swing, just like Patrick Murphy just talked about, 0-1. Lauder grounded out back in the first. Too far outside. Founce a five and one career record against the ACC, a 167 ERA, but it was an ACC team, Florida State, that knocked the Crimson Tide out of the Women's College World Series last year. One thing to really know with Montana is she comes right back. You know, she might throw a ball and then come right back with that strike and as an aggressive hitting team, that's something to note that Virginia Tech's probably gonna look out for. Water stays alive. You can see the coats are on for not just the fans, but the players. Everybody trying to stay warm. Chases the rise, another strikeout for Fouts. That's five. Such an effective pitch. That ball just is moving the entire time out of the hand. And at such a high velocity, it's such a tough pitch to really pick up as a hitter. And that's what makes Fout so impressive as a pitcher and very difficult to hit off of is that high speed as well as high movement. That rise working tonight. Now facing Jamie Bailey who struck out earlier. Goodness gracious, Kate, that rise ball is humming right now for Fouts. Absolutely, <laughs> that's such a high velocity. As you can see, the hitter tried to hold up, but the pitch is already gone by the time <laughs> she starts swinging, so. 
Got to be a little bit more on time. Another K, another rise, another out here in the fourth. You can see Alabama's defense right now, it just has such a tempo. Something that coaches always talk about is keeping that tempo high. When you're feeling it, you want to keep it going, keep it alive, and just really work at your pace. Allie Repko will try and extend the inning. She struck out back in the second. Just missed. Repco fouls that one back. The Hokies open the season with a 5-0 stretch in Leesburg, Florida, beat three ranked teams. Had three victories by a single run. They're used to close games. count. That's well hit out to right, but it's not going to have the distance. Woodard is there for out number three. Montana Fouts pitching a gym right now. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Tide still up on the Hokies, 1-0. Temperature dropping, excitement level rising as we head to the bottom of the fourth, Alabama one. Virginia Tech zero. Now definitely pleased to be joined by the head coach of the Hokies, Pete DeMore. Coach, what adjustments do you want to see from your offense going forward against Fouts? Uh, I think we're doing okay. I just It's Montana Fouts, so she's supposed to strike you out. So let's get three hacks at her, see what happens. Maybe we'll run into one. And as you start to pitch against the Alabama offense, what adjustments are you guys making on the mound as you continue to pitch against Bama hitters. Yeah, I think I think Keeley's getting better as the game goes on. I, I think uh, she might have been cold like me in the beginning of the game, so <laughs> she's warming up. Well, we're all cold, Coach. Thank you so much for joining us. You got it. Thank you. <laughs> that is Virginia Tech head coach Pete Demore. He's right. It is chilly. The blankets are out. Heavy coats. Toboggans. Some snow overalls. Bottom four, Alabama's got six, seven, eight due up. Coach Demore said he thinks Keely Rochard is getting better as the game has gone on. Kate, and I think for sure we have seen her get ahead more often as the Absolutely. game has progressed. Absolutely, and I think she's just mixing up her pitches and really getting that low rise ball in the zone, which is, makes her super effective. Prangy reached on an error back in the second. 
the lone error of the ball game. And that's past third. Prangy is aboard to lead things off here in the bottom of the fourth. Called a single, so the second hit of the ball game for the Crimson Tide. Prangy does a, a great job on that last ball, hitting in the 5-6 hole. Like we said earlier, like you are trying to hit a down pitch, hit it hard somewhere, and she did just that by getting it through that defense on the left side. Prangy aboard for the lone RBI producer of the ball game thus far, Abby Dore. Her RBI single in the second is all the scoring we've seen. Big hack there, 0-1. Beautiful change up. It's a great pitch from Rochard. You see that ball moving down in the zone as well, which is just super effective. You always want to keep a change up low in the zone. The motto is slow and low. Well, another strikeout for Rose Shard. She handled that at bat well. She's got five. And we've talked about that a lot today. Kate, coming back after you allow a run or a base hit, Rochard just did a great job. Absolutely, and she really mixed up her pitches and set that last pitch up so well for success. Now facing Megan Bloodworth. Bloodworth 0 for 1. She popped out back in the second. Tied 1 for 7 with runners on here in this game. Bloodworth wearing that number 33 and with a story on a number, another number 33 in Alabama history. Let's check in with Kira. Yeah, Claire Jenkins used to wear number 33 as well, a former Alabama standout. She uh, actually texted Coach Murphy and said, hey, give me all the numbers for the freshmen. And she reached out to every single freshman and let them know, look, you know, don't be nervous. I can remember that feeling. I know what it's like. It's going to be great. She just really gave some words of encouragement. So that team love never really goes away, does it? Not at all, and what a number this has been in Alabama history. Claire Jenkins, one of the leaders of the team the last couple seasons. Of course, Jackie Trana pitched Alabama to that 2012 National Championship a decade ago. Bloodworth chases the rise, two gone. That right there is Rochard's bread and butter with that up pitch. It's just moving so much, so fast. And it's just, what a great pitch. Extremely tough to hit. Here's Woodard, takes ball one. Kate, was there a pitch in particular that you really struggled with? Was there anything that you just hated to see when it was coming at you? Oh man, an off-speed dropout. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's all of them, so. I'd... Don't give me a bat. There you see my All-American Partners resume, ACC Player of the Year. Back in 19, as Woodard lofts this to center. Ritter is there, side retired. After the leadoff single, Rochard works out of it. We've played four, still one nothing. Crimson Tide off to the fifth in Tuscaloosa. Well, we expected a pitcher's duel. One run on the board, just three combined hits, and Keeley Rochard and Montana Fouts have been working. Absolutely. You're going to see Keeley Rochard with that low rise ball. Montana as well attacking with that rise ball up in the zone, making it really tough for these pitchers to see it and hit it. There you see the stats. 
both with six strikeouts, the three combined hits, the one run allowed by Rochard in four innings. The one difference is the four walks, Kate, but it really hasn't come back to hurt Rochard. No, but as you move forward, you definitely want to limit those walks. It's just extra pitches that you don't necessarily need to throw and keep that pitch count low. Five, six, seven for the Hokies. Bennett, Green, Milius. Starting to get late here in Tuscaloosa. Bennett struck out back in the second. Beautiful evening, despite the temperature here in Tuscaloosa. What a weekend for softball. And that right there is what Virginia Tech needs to do in order to have that offensive success is to lay off that up pitch, look down, and attack the low pitch. Swing and a miss. And that's the thing about facing Montana Founts. You can decide to lay off the rise, but she can work all over the zone with all the other pitches that she has in the toolbox. Absolutely. Not only that, but she also has an off speed, which makes it even tougher for pitchers to gauge what pitch she's about to throw. Found back. As a hitter, though, one thing that is going to set you up for success is when you are facing someone who throws as hard as Montana Fouts throws is shortening up and getting bad on the ball. Let her speed work for you, and that is how you'll be able to succeed with a higher velocity pitcher. To short, Dowling is there, but all she does is keep it in the infield. That's a leadoff single for the Hokies, trying to get something going here in the fifth. Maddie Federico, the sophomore from Midlothian, Virginia, on the pinch run for Bennett. Pete DeMore wants speed on base. Just different speed. That's Emmy Yates. So Yates stands on first with Addie Green stepping in. Let's check in with Kira. Yeah, you guys, I talked to Coach Dahmer earlier, and he said that before road games, there's always one person that's job it is to make the team laugh with a joke or something silly. And today it was Addie Green. She chose to make a video where she put the coaches' faces on the singers of the people in the Girls Just Want to Have Fun music video. It went over really well. It was a good time, and I think it's helping keep the team loose today. Well, I love that. Maybe we should start doing that before broadcast. I'll start ideating, Gray. Perfect. Green down 0-2. Nice job holding off there, 1-2. And that right there is expanding the zone, what Coach Murphy was talking about with Montana. You know, with that 0-2 pitch, you don't need to bring it as close to the plate. She can still have success and invert the eyes up by that rise ball being a little bit more out of the zone, force the hitter to look up, and then come right back at him. Swing and a miss. Seventh strikeout for Montana Fouts. One down. 
Hobbs does such a great job coming right back at her as a hor with a horizontal screwball versus the pitch before with that high rise ball, you know, setting it up high and then going, keeping in the ball a little bit lower, keeping it horizontal on the plate. And like we've talked about all day long in both of our games, coming back after giving up the base hit. Absolutely, Montana's doing a great job of winning the first pitch, getting that first pitch strike. Facing Alexa Milius now, 0 for 1, with the ground out in the third. Milius popped to second. Bloodworth is there for out number two. Pinch hitter for the Hokies instead of Emma Ritter. It's Meredith Slav, a junior from Warsaw, Virginia. 286 BA on opening weekend. How hard is it, Kate, to come off the bench and try and get a pinch hit hit against a pitcher throwing at the velocity of Fouts. It's definitely not easy. Be kind of a fresh perspective when you bring in a pinch hitter. You know, they're they're fresh, they're ready, and they're looking to make something happen. It's a piece there. And I just love how they're being such aggressive swingers and attacking the low pitch. And that's exactly what Slaw is doing. She's attacking the lower pitch, and that's a great way to you know, have a little bit more success in her at-bat. You've got to think, yeah, you're right. You've got to think Fouts is going to go rise here on the 0-2. We will see. No, she went low and away, and it still worked. A strikeout from Montana Fouts, and the leadoff single doesn't come around. Off to the bottom of the fifth, still 1-0. Crimson Tide over the Hokie. Well, we expected a pitcher's duel, and that is exactly what we've had thus far. one nothing Alabama, four hits combined. Keeley Rochard, six strikeouts in four innings. Montana Fouts, eight Ks in five. The difference, an Abby Dorr RBI single back in the bottom of the second. Keeley Rochard has looked better and better as the game has gone on, but now facing the Alabama lineup for the third time. One, two, three, do up. Johnson walked back in the first, struck out in the third. Those right there are the pitches that Alabama's looking to capitalize on, especially when you have a pitcher like Rochard. Those are what you need to, to look for when you're, you know, in the box ready to attack the next pitch. Just missed, one, two. Entering tonight, Rochard had a 502 career ERA against the SEC. Three and two with a save, but picked up a couple wins against SEC squads to start the year. Kentucky and Missouri down in Florida on opening weekend. Johnson pulls that foul.
Rochard, first team All-American last year. Patrick Murphy right on the money. And we were chatting with him. Fountain Rochard, two of the three first team All-America pitchers last year. Johnson chases that one. Lauder throws to first for the strikeout. Big night here in Tuscaloosa, but of course a lot of action's been happening down at the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational. 40 games over this weekend, Thursday to Sunday. Earlier today, Northwestern walked off UCLA an extra 6-4. LSU up on Oklahoma State right now, top six, 7-2. Clemson beating Tennessee 3-2 through three. A big story out of Clearwater was the injury to Ashley Rogers, the ace for the Lady Vols. Pitched a couple innings in the opener against Notre Dame, was pulled. We all thought maybe, hey, Tennessee saving her for later that day. Turns out it was a illness that sent Rogers to the hospital and she is out for the rest of the weekend. Her status beyond that unknown, but we certainly hope to see her back out in the circle soon. Rochard has struck out Dallas Goodnight twice. The freshman 0 for 2. Lays off that one, 1 2. Rochard's just doing such a great job of getting ahead in her counts and giving her the ability to throw all those other pitches, which is where she really excels at. Swing and a miss, another K. That's eight for Keeley Rochard, two gone. And that right there is such a great drop ball on the outside part of the plate. Really, you know, when you have a rise ball pitcher, to be able to throw a drop ball just as good as your rise ball and get your strikeouts on and swings and misses on that pitch as well, extremely effective. First pitch ball to Kaylee Tao. Tao flew out in the first. A walk in the third. That was a four pitch walk. After that, Rochard walked Shipman. Since then, strikeout, single, strikeout, strikeout, fly out, strikeout, strikeout. One, two. We hyped it up. Rochard versus Fouts, two first team All-Americans, two conference pitchers of the year. Two players who tried out for the women's national team in the off season. Right on the inside corner, Rochard strikes out the side. Give Keeley Rochard nine of them. And we've played five. Rochard, hot right now. Still one nothing Alabama, off to the sixth in Tuscaloosa. The sun continues to sink here in Tuscaloosa. We've played five, Alabama one, Virginia Tech zero. Sometimes the easy storylines are easy because 
They make the most sense. We expected a pitching duel. We have gotten a pitching duel, and Montana Fouts has been extremely sharp. Yeah, she's really attacking that up pigeon as well as, you know, keeping the ball down on her drop ball, which makes it very tough to hit as a hitter and deciphering between the up and the low. A combined 17 strikeouts by Fountain Rochard. Johnson gives chase on the foul from Kelsey Brown. And as it gets darker, Friday Night Lights out here at Rhodes Field, we're really, you know, seeing some great competition, 1-0. Yeah, this is what we hoped coming in. I mean, we were excited. You could feel the buzz. The cold weather has sent a couple people home early, but still a hearty crowd here at Rhodes. Kelsey Brown had a single back in the third. That was an infield single. Thank you. Now reaching her second time around here in the top of the sixth. 0-2, oh, swing and a miss. Fouts has nine. Back to the top, Cameron Fagan, 0 for 2. Lifted to left, that's foul. If you're familiar with the Fagan last name. Cameron's sister, Sammy, played at Missouri, was an All-American. Haley Fagan played softball at Auburn, helping the Tigers get to two Women's College World Series, including the Champ Series. The middle that gets through. Fagan is aboard. One out single for Virginia Tech here in the top of the sixth. Fagan does such a great job staying on top of that rise ball to get the ball to go through the middle of the infield right there and get on base. Third hit of the ball game for the Hokies. They are 0 of 4 with runners on base thus far. Mackenzie Lauder will try and change that. Swinging hard. 0 oh, 1. Lauder 0 oh, for 2, ground out in the first, strike out in the fourth. Water goes after that one, 0-2. Oh, no kid is, we watched this game unfold. The other number that jumps out at me, 70, the pitch count for Montana Fouts here in the sixth inning. Right, I mean, that's what happens when you attack the zone as well as she does and be as consistent as possible. I mean, throwing strikes, Keeps your pitch count pretty low, and she's doing a great job of that all night. That was just the 18th ball thrown by Fouts. It's a great ratio. <laughs> that I'm sure will thrill pitching coach Stephanie Van Brekel per throw. Water gets a piece of the rise. One and two count as a hitter right now, especially with someone who throws as hard as Fouts and as high as Fouts. You're just thinking down through the ball on this. On, 
There's Fagan at first. Swing and a miss. 10 strikeouts for Montana Fouts. She has appeared in two games this year. She's got two double-digit strikeout performances. Absolutely, doing a great job keeping that ball low and it only going lower. Beautiful on the outside corner. Tough pitch to hit. 30th career double-digit strikeout game for Fouts. Jamie Bailey has struck out twice. Kate, are you surprised at all that we did not see Lauder try and play a little small ball or, or even try and lay down a sacrifice or anything to move Fagan to second? A little bit, yeah, especially when, you know, Fouts is doing such a great job of striking out. You might want to change your approach a little bit, try and make the small, small ball happen. Again, with the rise ball pitcher, though, it is a little tough to get those bunts down. Lauder had just one sack bunt in her entire career, so you can understand it from a personnel standpoint that Virginia Tech has yet to get a runner past first. And now Bailey's down one, two. Chopped to short, Dowling makes the play again. Alabama gets out of it. Virginia Tech cannot take advantage of the single, and we head to the bottom of the sixth. Tied up 1-0 on the Hokies. Keely Softball in prime time, what could be better? UCLA FSU to close out the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational on Sunday on ESPN. That'll feature Beth Mullins, Michelle Smith, Amanda Scarborough, all part of the Seven Innings Podcast. Download it wherever you get your podcasts. Follow them on Twitter and the Gram. Maddie Shipman, a part of the Seven Innings Podcast. And her sister, Allie at the plate right now for the Crimson Tide. Four, five, six, due up. <laughs> Quickly, 0-2. Shipman has walked twice in the second and the third. Alabama looking for some insurance. Virginia Tech will have four, five, six. Repco, Bennett, and Green due up in the seventh against Fouts. Shipman high in the sky to center. Ritter there, one down. And that pitch right there is what makes Rochard so effective, right? Like her rise ball starts so low at the same height as her drop ball. So as a hitter, you don't know whether it's going up or down. And that makes it such a tough pitch to hit. It's one of the reasons why she was the ACC Pitcher of the Year last year, ACC Week 1 Pitcher of the Week. This will be pitch number 100 against Bailey Dowling. And another first pitch strike. And that's something else we've seen, Kate. Coach Demore talked about it, but pretty much since the third inning, I would say, Rochard, it feels like, has gotten ahead of every single batter. Almost, I mean, that is the goal as a pitcher, right? You are trying to establish that strike zone. You're trying to get ahead. Just as a hitter, you're trying to make that hit happen. Dowling fooled by the off speed. Dowling is 0 for 2, into a fielder's choice in the second, but did come around to score. She is the lone run that has crossed home plate. Also struck out looking in the third.
What a night this has been, and we get another one tomorrow between these two teams. Absolutely. It's going to be a great one. Another strikeout. Rochard's got 10. Both pitchers have 10. We highlighted the duel between Fouts and Rochard. It was what we hoped to see. It's what we got. And thus far, it's been pretty even. Fouts has given up more hits, but the one mistake, Rochard gave up that RBI single to Abby Dorr way back in the second. As you can see, Rochard's walks haven't even increased since that last one. So you can tell she's definitely gotten better, definitely commanded the zone throughout the rest of this game and just learning each inning what to do and making herself better every time. Yeah, you're right on the money there. One walk in the first, one in the second by Rochard, two in the third. Since then, no free passes. 0-2 to Prangy. Ashley Prangy has reached twice, reached on an error in the second, singled back in the fourth. That single, the last Alabama batter to reach base. One, two, right in there for a called strike three. What a performance from Rochard, 11 Ks. We head to the seventh. Fouts will try and finish it off. Alabama one nothing over Virginia Tech. Montana Fouts, three hits allowed, a shutout thus far and 10 strikeouts, Kate, my goodness. Yeah, she's just really, on top of her game, I mean, that rise ball is just moving so much and is well on the horizontal pitches. Really working outside a lot of the time as well. The pitch count at 77, a very efficient outing for the All-American. Now looking to close it out in the top of the seventh against four, five, six for the Hokies, Repco Bennett Green. Allie Repco, 0 for 2, struck out in the second. Flew out to right in the fourth. A pretty well hit ball out to Woodard. One and one. One, two, swing and a miss. Fouts with strikeout number 11. You can just see this pitch moves so much up in the zone and she kept it fairly low. Great pitch from Fouts. Kelsey Bennett. She is one for two. Strike out in the second, single in the fifth. Yeah. 
jammed and lifted to short. Dowling is there. Two gone. Down to their final out, Pete Tamore will turn to a pinch hitter. That's the freshman, Bree Peck. Out of Royersford, Pennsylvania. Number 35 in the extra inning softball recruiting class of 2021 was one of nine on opening weekend. Popped up. Bloodworth is there. Catch made, game over. Montana Fouts wins the pitching duel, and Alabama gets a top 10 victory. One nothing over Virginia Tech. Absolutely, that was such a great game just to watch and be a spectator and part of. I mean, both pitchers threw great as it was a 1-0 game. Only three hits, you know, against Keely Rochard. What a great job on both fronts between both pitchers. Excited for tomorrow. Another duel. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm this ready. is just part one of two, Kate. I'm we'll so ready. We'll be back ready. tomorrow for another top 10 clash between these teams. So for Kate Brooks, for Kira Goldstein, and our entire SEC Network crew, I'm Gray Robertson saying so long from Tuscaloosa, where our final score is Alabama 1, Virginia Tech 0. Join us tomorrow for more softball action in the Bama Bash, Virginia Tech and Alabama.